Okay, today we're going to talk about transformations in the coordinate plane. We will transfer, uh, transform figures in quadrant one of the coordinate plane. Remember, boys and girls, that we learned that quadrant one is up here in the top right-hand corner, then quadrant two, then quadrant three, and quadrant four. Again, in this chapter, we're only going to be dealing with quadrant one. All right, here on this slide, we're going to be learning about how to translate figures in the coordinate plane. And what that means is to translate a figure, you're sliding it to a different place. So you can see on the graph here, we already have a triangle titled PQR that has been translated, or we used sliding to move it to the right. Now, the first question asks us on number one, the distance from P to the second point P is blank units. So one way to figure this out is I can count from this first point P to the second point. When I do that, I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces over. So I know the distance from the first point P to the second one is seven units. Another way to look at this is to graph or figure out what the points are. So for this first point, P, I notice that it is 1, 4. Remember, those are the x and y coordinates there. The second point, P, is 8, 4. Remember that you have to go on the x-axis first and then the y. Now, noticing that, we slid to the right, so we slid on the x-axis. So I'm only going to look at my numbers in the x area. So it's 1 to 8, and I know that would be 7 for our difference. So it's 7 units for the distance from P to P. Okay, now we're going to look at question 2, and we need to know the distance of point Q. Um, again, we can do this in two different ways. When we move from here to there, we can count our 7 spaces over and uh, know that our answer is 7. But again, we'd like you to look at the ordered pairs. The first Q is at 3, 2. That's our ordered pair. And the Q has moved in the second spot to 10, 2. Again, um, looking at the x-axis, we have 3 to 10. And we can obviously see that that has moved 7 units. When we go to the last um, point on our, on our picture here, uh, point R, again, counting works. We can count over, and we will notice that it has moved seven spaces again. And again, we look at our ordered pair, which is the first R is 5, 4, and the second one is 12, 4. You will notice that pattern. Um, for all three points, again, we're just looking at our x-axis, and from 5 to 12 will also give you 7. On this slide, we have the same image from before, so we're just summarizing what we learned from the previous slide. So we know that triangle PQR has been translated 7 units. Now remember, we counted that and looked at the ordered pairs to decide that it translated to the right 7 units. So now we know the distance between each pair of corresponding points, what that means, the distance from the first P to the second, the first R to the second R, and the first Q to the second Q is seven units. Now for number five, it wants us to translate each point of triangle PQR up five units on the coordinate grid above. So remember, translate is a slide, so that just means we're going to move it up. Okay, now it specifically said up five points, so I'm going to start with point P. If I'm going to move that up five units, well, it's at four right now. Remember, we're moving up on the y-axis. So that means our new point P would be at the nine on the y-axis. Next, I will translate or slide point Q up five units. So again, counting up from the two that it's at right now on the y-axis, count up five, and the new Q would be at point 7 on the y-axis. And again, for point R, it's already at 4, so then I would translate that up 5 units to 9. 
Now I went ahead and connected our points, so now you can see I have our new triangle PQR that has been translated up five units. Now for number six, we need to write the new vertices of this second translated triangle, so our brand new triangle we've drawn. So for the first point P, for our new point P, looking at it, I know that the x-axis, it would be one, and then it's at nine for the y-axis. Our new point Q, would be at 2 for the x-axis and 7 for the y. And then our new point R would be at 5, 5 for the x-axis and 9 for the y-axis. Okay, now we're going to take a look at uh, questions 8 and 9 here and uh, moving again, flipping a figure on a coordinate plane. The first direction, uh, number 8, we need to plot a point at 6.9. So I go ahead and find over 6 and up 9. Put a point there. You are going to be following along in your workbook at this time. Um, now we're going to plot our next point at 6.12. So I'll go ahead and plot a point there. And then I'm going to draw a line. Now this is not the new shape. This is actually the line that we are going to flip our shape over. Um, so that's why they they wanted us to create this line is that shows the direction and where we're going to flip. Okay, now the next one we're going to move on to number nine. Now we are going to reflect or flip that trapezoid G K W S across the line. Um, Remember when you flip now, our points are going to be on opposite sides. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at point W, and I'm going to flip it. Point W is now going to be facing in, and it's going to be right there. Now, one thing to keep in mind is notice that W is two squares away from my line that I'm flipping over. So notice I put it two squares to the right. Um, that's going to keep my shape um, in the right position. So when I look at that coordinate, um, the coordinate for that is 8, 9. Okay, now I'm going to look at K. Notice K is three squares away. So I'm going to go to the right three squares. Again, and put my dot there. Um, three squares away to the line and three squares this way, which would put me in the order pair 9, 12. Notice that I went from... So now um, I'm going to go on to the next point. So let's, let's move uh, point G and we're going to plot that point. Again, I know that this is point K right here. So I know that G is two further away than that. So I know that point G is going to be right there. I'm going to just go ahead and also do that for S. I notice that the distance from W to S is three squares away. So I'm going to go over one, two, three. Now I can put those two ordered pairs. S would be at 11, 9. And point G would be at 11, 12. Okay, now you can see that I connected my lines and I have created a right trapezoid that is congruent to my original trapezoid and it's flipped across the line. And again, notice my spacing here from the line to the trapezoid is equal on both sides. All right, then your ticket to class is to complete problems 10 and 11 on the same workbook page you were just doing 8 and 9 on. Notice that number 10, you're plotting the points of the line that you will be using to reflect the trapezoid. Number 11, then you actually do the work of plotting the reflected trapezoid, and then make sure that you record the ordered pairs of that reflected trapezoid.